Hey guys, it's your girl Ashley and welcome back to another one of my YouTube videos. So this video is video number two of my home series. So in this video, I am giving you all the details on realistically how much it costs to buy or build your dream home in Texas. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm just going to move to Texas and I'm about to buy this 4,000 square foot home on one to two acres of land and it's just going to be this beautiful mansion for dirt cheap. And wrong. No, 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 no. It's not happening. Trust me. It's not going to happen like that. So I want to dive into realistically how much does it actually cost to build or buy a home in Texas so that we can not be, I guess, miss so that we cannot be misinformed i guess misinformed or we don't set ourselves up for all of these big hopes and dreams because i was one of those people living in california i just knew like okay once we start to build this home in texas we are going to basically get our dream home we're going to get this this mini mansion for dirt cheap and it just does not work like that so i want to give you all of the hidden costs the things that people don't talk about and the things that i wish i would have known prior to starting this process but before we get into this video make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed and yeah let's get into it okay guys so the first thing that i want to say is that compared to places like california dc new york places like that you actually will get more bank for your or more house for your buck in texas absolutely um there is no question there but just the misconception or the idea that you're just going to go buy this mansion for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars in texas that is just not accurate um especially if you have like expensive taste now if you are just looking to just buy a basic home with the basic tile on the floor basic brown cabinets basic granite you can get a nice or a big home for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars easy but when you start talking about the white kitchen and the quartz countertops um and the more like luxury vinyl on your floor and you're talking about um the like the hardwood throughout the house or luxury vinyl throughout your home versus having carpet in your dining area or carpet in the living room when you start to talk about that type of stuff that whole misconception of i'm going to buy a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house or four hundred thousand that goes out the window because once you start to get into that type of stuff it starts to add up and it adds up quickly so yes buying a home in texas absolutely affordable um compared to other states like i mentioned absolutely a lot more cheaper however you're still going to pay a pretty penny to get that dream home um that you want hence the reason why i'm calling this our mini dream home because i wasn't able to get everything that i wanted and like you guys i was thinking you know we originally we lived in san diego before we came overseas to Cuba. So I just knew in my mind, once we started building in Texas, this was going to be our dream forever home. It's not. Um, I'm gonna end up having to, you know, wait some few years or five, six, seven years, and then actually get my dream home. But that's okay because this home that we are building, I'm so grateful for. I'm so happy that God has blessed us and allowed us to do it. And it really is a beauty and it's going to be like our mini dream home. So it's still going to be precious in my baby, um, but it's just not like what I had in my mind as far as, oh, okay, this is the final stop. This is not going to be it. So anyway, originally James and I had no intentions of building a semi custom home so if you guys don't know and you're new to my channel we are building a home in san antonio and it's a semi custom build so basically what that means is um our our build we found a builder who had like a floor plan but 
we're able to kind of customize it the way that we want it. So we were able to add bedrooms, take things away. We were able to like add a media room. We were able to put what's like, for an example, the original model didn't only had the master bedroom on the first floor. Well, we need two bedrooms on the first floor and three bedrooms upstairs. So we were able to manipulate it and say, okay, we want two bedrooms downstairs. So take this bedroom and put it down here and then put three upstairs. Um, the original model had like an office. Well, we didn't need an office space and it had like a half bath. So we was able to take that away and then make the bath downstairs like a full bath. So we had a lot of say so as to the structure, I guess, or the rooms or like how we wanted that the layout to be. With the custom bill, you would actually be able to customize the entire house. We didn't need that. We just needed to manipulate some things, add some things, take some things away. And then also what comes with the semi-custom bill is that we we pick, I literally designed everything in the house. So when I do finally reveal the home to you guys, and then also stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm gonna give you a video of what the house looks like right now. So an update on how the house is going. So anyways, when I do finally do the reveal to you guys and I give you guys guys like an empty house walkthrough, everything that you see, I literally picked it out. Like every color scheme down to the doors, the door handles, the hinges on the doors, the color of the sink, the color of the faucets, every single thing in the home, I actually picked it out and designed it and put it so together. Yeah, that's the beauty of doing a semi-custom build. So back to the story. Originally, we were not supposed to be doing a new construction. We had a wish list and our wish list consisted of a pool in the back, a, upgrade, a updated kitchen. I wanted a white kitchen, so white um, cabinets. I wanted the nice quartz countertops with like a marble to it. Um, what else? Up-to-date bathrooms. Um, James wanted a media room and a game room and we wanted not to be close to our neighbors like we wanted like maybe at least an acre of land I guess so I don't know 30 days into our home buying process we had our realtor looking we were looking on Zillow and Redfin and we probably looked at about 40 or 50 houses and we could not find that we could not find oh and then so our max that we wanted to spend was five hundred thousand dollars so we are looking at houses up to five hundred thousand dollars that's the cutoff we could not find a house for five hundred thousand dollars with our wish list it was either they had pools and then the kitchens was trash or they had a nice kitchen but they didn't have a pool and then the bathrooms were like outdated or I don't it just what we wanted we could not find in one home and it was either going to take like we so say like for example we found a house with the pool but the kitchen was outdated the bathroom was outdated and then like the stairs weren't like modern they were like old stairs i would probably have to put in seventy five thousand to a hundred thousand dollars of rehab to get it how i want it so now you just spent 400 and something thousand for this house and then you have to spend another hundred thousand like get it to work to what you want and then it still wouldn't be completely what i wanted so my whole yeah my misconception that i was just going to be able to find this dream mansion for five hundred thousand dollars with a pool and five bedrooms that went out the window quickly okay so now our realtor comes to us and she's basically like, well, you know, Ashley, you're just not going to get what you're looking for. It sounds to me like you would benefit more for from doing a semi custom bill or a custom bill. So she told us the difference between the two. And I was like, great, I can do the semi custom bill. I don't need to design the entire, I don't need to in design the structure of the home. As long as I'm able to take some rooms away, add some rooms and design the, the outside and the inside with what color brick I want, the windows I want, all of that stuff, then we're good. So we went with the semi custom build. All right, so 
now I'm going to tell you about all of these hidden fees and these costs that people don't talk about when you start to talk about new construction homes. Okay guys, so let's get into these costs. So first, I'm gonna say most new constructions, they're not coming with a built-in pool or this big pool of oasis in your backyard. Um, and I mean, you can have that added, but when I did my research on like a good pool in Texas, you're not, and I researched several companies because I still um, want to get a pool put in the back. So that's still on the table for us right now. But you're not spending less than $45,000 to $50,000 on a built-in pool in Texas. A good one, anyway. So that's just something to throw out there. Okay, so you find your builder, you found the home, or you found the model that you want, and you're doing a semi-custom semi build, or you're doing a new construction home. Even if, even if you're not doing a semi-custom build and you're just doing a new construction home where you are building it from the ground up. So depending on, this is something I didn't know, depending on what size home you are building, that is going to determine. So if you have bought like an acre of land or two acres and then you're building, that's a completely different process. This process that I'm talking about is we found a builder, we're building a new construction home with a builder. So each builder will have certain lot sizes. So like 50 foot lot, 60 foot lot, 70 foot lot. And depending on what size home that you are building, that is going to determine what size lot your house can go on. So if you're building a 4,000 square foot home, then your home may not be able to even go on a 50, a 50 foot lot. It may have to, it only can go on the 70 foot lot. And I'm saying this to say, when you close the deal or you sign your contract on a home, the price that you're signing for from the home for the home that is separate from that lot that you're buying so say for instance you find the model of the home that you want and to build this home just like the basic home it's going to come with windows doors cabinets all of that stuff but just the bare minimum the brown cabinets um the cheapest tile it's going to come with carpet in the living room carpet in the dining room no upgrades just like a basic house granite countertops that basic stuff and let's say it's four hundred thousand dollars so that's just for building this basic house then you're going to have to tack on the price of the lot so the 70 foot lot that could range from fifteen thousand dollars to twenty five thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars so tack that on to that four hundred thousand that twenty thousand that you had to pay for the lot or the fifteen thousand you had to pay for the lot so now you got the lot and you got the house so then you say oh okay well it comes with a basic back patio like a small patio but i want a patio the length of my house and i want it to be extended out to my backyard some tack on another ten thousand dollars for that seriously i'm not even joking so then like us the model that we looked at and that we liked, it didn't have a media room. It only had a game room. So to add the media room, tack on another $8,000. Oh, you don't want the half bath that's down here and you don't want the office, you want to convert that into a bedroom and a full bath, tack on another $5,000 for that. So you see how quickly <laughs> these costs add up? So although, it's really you can get a cheap home or you can buy a cheap home a cheaper home in texas or somewhere in the south versus somewhere like cali or dc when you start to actually like get into the building process up that number quickly goes up so you started at four hundred thousand, and just by manipulating a few things you are already close to five hundred thousand dollars and you haven't even went to the design center so I'm going to give you guys some examples of some costs when you go to the design center. Um, I got my little design center packet right here um, to give you guys some accurate numbers. But when you go to the design center, you basically, each builder, for my builder, they gave me two days, three hours, 
So two days, three hours each day to basically customize and design my entire house. So six hours to put it all together. So when you go here, it's like Disney World. They're going to show you all the elaborate stuff. So as long as you got a coin and you got the money, you can make your house as elaborate as you want or it can be as basic as you want. So you go in the design center and they have what they call levels. So level one is just going to be like your basic brown cabinets. The like, I'm going to insert a picture right here to kind of show you the difference between like the basic what's coming with the house and then what you can upgrade to. So for me, we're going to use the cab example. I didn't want brown cabinets. I didn't want the cabinets that kind of like I don't know what they're called like old school cabinets and they kind of sit out i wanted like the new modern style cabinets they're called shaker style cabinets so i wanted shaker and i wanted um white cabinets so let's talk about realistically how much it costs to get cabinets put so this is in addition to all of that money that you've already spent on manipulating the house extending the patio picking out your lot all of that stuff so, so for kitchen cabinets, just to be painted white, $2,530. And that's just like the kitchen cabinets. That's not like the, the island um, or the vanities and the cabinets in the other bathroom. So for the island cabinets to be painted white, add on another $770 for my master bathroom vanity and cabinets that's in there for them to be in shaker style and white or maybe this is gray this is actually not even white this is i wanted i had it i had my master bedroom cabinets in shaker style and in like gray but it's called dorian $1450 so this is all in addition so like I said, the cost adds up quickly. Another example. So your house, like I said, you can go as extravagant as you want or as basic as you want. So I wanted a modern looking door. I didn't want like the basic door that comes with the house. They're going to have 15, like I said, it's levels. So it could be ranged from level one to level 15. They'll have 20 different door styles that you can choose from, but you're going to pay for them. So the door that I wanted was $380 just to get the door that I wanted. And they didn't have it in the color I wanted. I wanted it to be in black. So add another $70 to that to stain the door to the color that I wanted. So, you know, like another example, stairs. So this is I'm gonna put up an example of like old school stairs that come with a normal house. I didn't want that. I wanted something that looked more like this, um, something more modern. So to upgrade my stairs just for like the post, $1,390. For the, where is, For the, you know, like the iron spindles that go in between the stairs, $960 for that. Um, the quartz countertops, because I wanted nice countertops, which I think when it comes to building a home, you should put money into your kitchen because when you're trying to resell it, that is one of the things that's gonna make the resale value go up. So to get, instead of getting granite or just like basic, um, I wanted something that was going to be durable. It was going to last long. Um, if I waste a glass of red wine, it wouldn't stain it. So I got quartz countertops, 200 and no, $2,310 for the quartz countertops. So I'm not going through this whole list, but I'm just saying all of this to say there is a misconception that you can just buy a cheap house. Like you can buy a cheap house, but it depends on your taste. You can end up spending $700,000, $800,000 on a home in Texas, just like you can spend seven hundred dollars or $800,000 on a home in California. Granted, you're going to get 
more of what you want for $800,000 in Texas or $700,000 in Texas versus Cali because a $800,000 house in Cali, I don't know, I guess it's like, a, it's a, probably a basic house. You probably will have a pool, but it's gonna be small and close to your neighbors. So that's the difference. But nevertheless, I just kinda wanted to give you guys an example of some of the costs that you can expect to pay and the things that people don't talk about when you see people on social media and they're posting these new houses and they got a new construction and oh you know da 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 yeah you can get that stuff but just know if you have like particulars you're going to pay some money for it okay guys so before I show you the updated house and the progress that we have made. I'm super excited. Um, I just wanted to say, I didn't even dive into like the details of if you wanted to like upgrade it, upgrade the padding under the carpet, that's an extra cost. If you wanted to add like sliding glass doors to like where your patio and your living room is at, go ahead and tack on a good eight to ten thousand dollars for that if you wanted to put like backsplash in your kitchen like every single thing they charge you for like if you don't get level one the basic of what comes which i mean they some i guess some of the stuff is like you know they have some good options but a lot of the times like i said it's just the basics or whatever so any little thing you want to upgrade that backsplash you finna come out of pocket for some extra money and i'm saying all of this to say it's just good for you guys to know this if you are thinking about or you're in the process of building a home go ahead and have this in your mind also shop around for your builders like we didn't really shop around that much but luckily one of the incentives from our builder was they gave us $15,000 worth of design center. So we were able to take, you know, they gave us basically a $15,000 credit to use in a design center. So shop around different builders because they will have incentives. So you might have a builder that's going to give you $15,000. You might have one that's going to give you $5,000. And if upgrades is going, you know, that's going to be a big deal for you. That may be the determining factor, whether you go with this builder or you go with that building, depending on what like their work is. Like if you've researched them, and they are not like the best builder, then of course you're not going with them. But if you've researched two or three builders and they all are pretty reputable, but one is giving you $20,000 in the design center and the other one is giving you $8,000, then you probably wanna go with that person. So anyways, guys, I really hope that you guys got some kind of insight into somewhat of the, um, the home buying process. Let me know if you want me to do just a single detailed video on the design center experience and like really dive into everything they have to offer the whole process then i will do another video strictly on being prepared to go to the design center because that is the one thing that you have to be mentally prepared for like you have already got to have it in your mind like i'm not spending no more than twenty thousand dollars up worth of upgrades or i'm not spending more than fifty thousand dollars worth of upgrades because you can literally go to the design center and leave out of there and you just spent hundred and fifty thousand dollars in just upgrades so let me know in the comments below what do you guys think about that let me know if this video was helpful for you guys and as always thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for supporting my channel. Make sure you hit that like button, drop me a comment, subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's get into this update and see what the progress is for our home. Hey, Ashley James, it's Takesha. Today is January the 17th. Here is um, a video for your home. That's your grand entrance way. From upstairs, I'm standing in the game room right now. It looks like all your windows have been put in. And you got three windows there. And I'm standing in the center of your game room with the closet. And then we're gonna walk over here into Cam's room.
And I noticed in here, um, I don't know if it's gonna go there, but one of the floor plans we looked at, it had the uh, closet over here. So it looks like they're not putting it there. Maybe they're gonna cut it later, but we'll keep an eye on that. And then there's Cam's closet. This is where the tub is gonna go. His water closet, that's where the toilet will go. And then your sink goes here. We're gonna cut and come back. Okay, so now I'm walking across the hallway to the other bedroom. This one has a pretty good size walk-in closet. And then we're gonna walk back. Okay, here's the master bedroom. Into your master bathroom where I believe your shower is gonna go there, your tub, your water closet where the toilet goes. Your double vanity with the sink. <clears throat> My sink should go here. And you should have another sink about here. I did some pictures of all of this too. Hopefully they're Here's your living room. They are prepping that area there for your fireplace. And then you're gonna have your double sliding glass doors. You have a window, two double windows there. I think this is gonna be your um, space for your dining room. And then you also have a door here off the dining room for your patio. This is the entryway. And they still have to put that rounded part up there.
Here's that other bathroom. I'm sorry, the bathroom on the first floor. And then here is the bedroom. That's it.